From Aragon to Aragorn, nerds like a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that is correcting people. This is Um Actually. Joining us on this episode, we have Carolyn Page. Hello. Hello. We have Gus Sarola. Mm hmm. And we have Andrew Rosas. Hello. Oh, Hello. <laughs> This, uh, we're calling this a redemption episode because each of you has been on before and uh, narrowly missed victory. And so we are guaranteeing a chance for a win for someone here, unless it's a tie, I guess, in which case we'll call multiple <laughs> winners. But uh, no. we're not gonna go down that road because uh, that would be, uh, I don't know, I can't tell if it would be very satisfying or very unsatisfying if this were a three-way tie at the end. Unsatisfying, yeah. <laughs> I have here a stack of statements. These are incorrect statements about a bunch of nerdy shit. It's up to these folks to find what I've said that's wrong, buzz in, and correct me. All their corrections must be preceded with the phrase, um, actually. If they don't say it, I won't give them the point. And you can interrupt me whenever you want. As soon as you spot what's wrong, you can buzz on in. Here's our first statement. The Walking Dead finally concluded with its 10th season, but the show still shambles on in the form of spin-offs. In addition to the two spin-offs currently on the air, Fear the Walking Dead and The Walking Dead World Beyond, AMC has announced plans for a spin-off centered on Daryl and Carol, an episodic anthology series called Tales of the Walking Dead, and three original films centered on Rick Grimes. Uh, Carolyn is buzzed in. Um, actually, Tales of the Walking Dead is already on air. I don't think it is. I did write this question before now, uh, but I don't think that is correct. That's not what we're it, looking why, for. The premiere date is today. It's today? That's no, not no, fair. No, 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 that's no, not no. fair. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was can't a guess. <laughs> Zombies are too scary. I don't know this question. Zom I can't watch zombie stuff. It's too scary. Uh, Gus is buzzed in. Um, actually, the world beyond is not currently airing. Uh, I don't claim it is. It's kind of like an inverse of what, what Carolyn guessed. Uh, I, uh, it is a spinoff that is planned, and that mm, is true. Curses. Curses. Uh, Andrew, do you want to take a stab before we swing, swing back around here? Um, there aren't two uh, ones planned. There are three, um, uh, actually. There aren't two. There are three planned. <laughs> I mean, if, from the sounds of it, it sounds like they could have added another one at any point, the, the number of spinoffs <laughs> that are here. But as far as I know, no, it is just these two shows plus the three films. Um, <sighs> uh, uh, yes, uh, Carolyn. Um, actually, there weren't 10 seasons. I'm going to count that as being close enough. Um, I said The Walking Dead finally concluded with its 10th season. In fact, the show is still on the air. It has not concluded oh. yet, uh, in spite oh of all these spinoffs that are going on. Uh, <laughs> it is entering its 11th season right now. I believe that 11th season is planned to be the last season. But as of right now, it's still shambling along. It's the show that refuses to die. <laughs> I am sh I'm shocked Probably. every time I hear it's still on the air. Uh, like, which is not a knock against the show. It's like, I, like I, I just never really watched it. But it costs like $3 million an episode <laughs> and they shoot like 15 episodes a season. It, it just, it's a, such a, like, you know, it's a huge production every every season. There are a couple shows like that. I feel like that uh, I'm, I, I was surprised recently to learn that Grey's Anatomy is still I was about to say the, the same thing, yes. Oh. Yeah. And that show has gone absolutely bonkers there's like ghost sex that show is as crazy as like su like supernatural like it's just like yeah. we've done everything so now they're throwing like there 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 are no rules with Grey's Anatomy now it's like anything can happen most of the cast have died like some have died and like come back it's it's insane it's absolutely bonkers well, Carolyn, we'll give you that point and look forward to those two more other other spinoffs and those three movies we'll move on to our next statement here in the 1956 sci-fi classic Forbidden Planet, the crew of the United Planet starship C-57D arrives at the planet Altair IV, where they meet Dr. Morbius and his daughter, the lone survivors of an earlier expedition. Before they can evacuate, the ship is sabotaged by an invisible alien native to Altair IV. Uh, Gus is buzzed in. Um, actually, Dr. Morbius sabotages the ship. I'm gonna say you're close enough. It's a little bit of a roundabout thing, but yeah, you're uh, right. Uh, what I was looking for here was that it's not really an alien. Uh, it's a piece of alien tech that is that it manifests your thoughts, but those thoughts are being manifested by Dr. Morbius. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, I've, I've seen Forbidden Planet 
probably 10 times, but I probably haven't seen it in 15 years at this point. So I was like, oh man, like I'm really like scratching into the back of my brain. Like it's in there somewhere. I know, I know, I know this. The, the just... tiny person in Gus's head is just like scrambling through dusty boxes. Like, fuck, where is it? Where is it? I know just you were like, here. Just a big ball of Christmas yeah. lights tossing it to the side. All right, what is it? Oh, flammable the quadratic kids, pajamas. Formula. No, not that. I don't need that. Wow, what else do we have in there? Sokotoa, get the fuck out of here. What else is in here? The War of 1912. phone number? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I actually haven't seen Forbidden Planet, I'll, although I've, I've, I've added it to my queue as something. It's like, I guess I, I, this is a classic. I should check it out. I was uh, shocked and delighted to learn that Leslie Nielsen is in it because I only oh, yeah. know him from, from the comedies. And it's just like, oh, Leslie Nielsen playing a, a space commander? Hell yes. Like, uh, that's, you should have opened with that. What are you talking about? I think he's also in the original version of The Thing, the like 50s version. Oh, he was really? Like a serious actor for forever before he, he became. Uh, the Zucker brothers, uh, uh, yeah. you know, straight man. <laughs> but in, I think he was one of those kind of like B, like serious B sci-fi movie actors. Mm, so that makes sense that he would be yeah, in yeah, that yeah. And, and the original version of it. Uh, well, we'll move on to our next uh, statement and Gus will get that point. The 2007 movie Sunshine takes place in the year 2057 when the sun is dying and the Earth is becoming uninhabitably cold. An international crew of eight astronauts aboard the spaceship Helios is on a mission to reignite the sun by launching a nuclear weapon at it. Uh, Andrew and Gus have both buzzed in, but Andrew is first, so Andrew. Um, actually, they're not trying to restart the sun. Uh, they are. Uh, that is their intended mission. Uh, Gus. Um, actually, there are not eight astronauts. Uh, there are eight astronauts, yes. Um, uh, well, Carol well, okay. well, guys. <laughs> I'll buzz in, I'll buzz in. Yeah, go for okay. it. Okay. Um, actually, it's not called Helios. That is correct. Uh, the, the spaceship Ooh. is not called Helios. I'll give you the point unless anyone happens to know specifically what it is called. I'll take a stab. Um, actually, it's the Icarus. That is correct. <laughs> I was going to guess that. I was going to guess that. I should have said it. Fuck, I should have said it, but I didn't want to lose the point. Here, Gus, here. let's share that point. Come on, it's fair. Let's share let's, these. Come on. Let's share. Let's split it down I'm, the middle. Gosh, I'm going to say... That's that a terrible is, name. That is, like... If you were pitching that name in a writer's room, they would laugh at you for doing it. That is so, that is so bad. But it you'd be is, like, okay, great. We've got that one off the table. Like, shut up, Steve. That was like, Icarus, it is, come on. It is extremely on the nose. And also, like, doesn't bode well for the mission to right. uh, <laughs> to be like, it's like, hey, we're, we're, we're just spending a mission where we're going to go to the sun. What should we call our ship? It's like, literally anything but Icarus. <laughs> Pick anything else. <laughs> It's been a long time since I've seen the movie, but isn't it also like the Icarus 2? Wasn't there an Icarus I 1 was, that failed? I, it is yeah. the Icarus 2. Icarus 1 already fucking <laughs> fucked up. Don't call it Icarus 2. Learn from your mistakes. It's like calling it the Titanic. Don't do yeah. this. What's the name of your ship? Uh, it's called uh, the USS Second Act Low. That's the name yeah. of our, uh, our ship. Something might happen around that point to the ship. Who knows? Yeah. All right, everyone aboard the Dark Knight of the Soul. We got to rescue the Icarus too. <laughs> yeah. Trusty old tempt fate. We love, yeah. we love this ship, don't we, folks? Old unsinkable <laughs> can't be destroyed. <laughs> Uh, well, oh. I am going to give that point to Gus. Uh, as, uh, I was tempted to share it, but uh, but even that Gus was able to pull Icarus two out. Uh, clearly, <laughs> uh, he knows uh, he knows what he's doing here. I'm sorry, Carolyn. Well, with that, we'll move on to our next statement, uh, and this is a fan submitted question. This comes to us from one of our viewers. This one is submitted by Oliver C. Oliver C. Thank you, Oliver C. Pokemon moves can be very weird, but none are weirder than Gen 7 Z moves. Some signature Z moves include the Grand Slam Witch, Pulverizing Pancake, Menacing Moon Rays Maelstrom, Soul Stealing Seven Star Strike, and Let's Snuggle Forever. Uh, Carolyn and Gus have both buzzed in, but Carolyn is first. Um, actually, mm -hmm. this, this main Slam Witch one, the first mm -hmm. Slam Witch one that you said is not a Z move. Uh, that is correct. The Grand Slam, which is a menu offering at Denny's restaurants across the country. Uh, it is not Ooh, wow. a Z-move from uh, Gen 7 Pokemon. Pikachu, Denver omelet, go! <laughs> I mean, they do have... <laughs> I just like, put it, flip it and put an omelet right there. It's like, I guess it's... Yeah. 
uh, it's super effective. I don't know. It's pretty sure. good. Bulbasaur is allergic to olives. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he ate it. Now he has to take a nap. He's so full. <laughs> <laughs> Little Z's going. It's like, oh, your Bulbasaur is yeah. asleep. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But like, when you have things like pulverizing pancake and menacing moon, it's like, oh, these do sound kind of like menu items. Weirdly, the moon's over my hammy is a move in Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now I just want to know what Let's Snuggle Forever is. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I have a video of it. I have a video of it. Ooh, oh, okay. Okay. Oh, it's Mimi Q's. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's so it like envelops. It. Mm-hmm. I will say that Let's Snuggle Forever is maybe one of the more horrifying options on here. If it was like, if someone was like, you have to choose your method of execution, like you today <laughs> will die. And like, how would you like to die? Would you like to die by the pulverizing pancake or the let's snuggle forever? And it's like, I know what I'm getting with the first one and I don't with the second. <laughs> so I think I might just go with the first. Yeah, there's something There's something very, so way more terrifying about the thing that's like saccharine sweet to a degree that I'm like, that's gotta be worse. Yeah. Right? Gotta yeah. be worse about, it's about I'm sorry, the, the eternal hug? No, yeah. I don't like you that. You want one me bit. to choose that one. I'm in your head. Are you think I'm gonna pick <laughs> yeah. that? So I'm not gonna fucking pick that one, you idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Mimikyu's a scary Pokemon, too. Oh, yeah, what's yeah. the deal bring with Mimikyu? the skin of another Pokemon. No, don't and do you, that, you, Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some really dark stuff like um, Cubone, for example, is it. It's got a little skull hat on. Mm. It's very mm-hmm. cute, but it's in the lore of Pokemon. It's wearing the skull of its dead mother. Mm. Mm. There's like a vulturey one that is like wearing a human skull as a diaper, and it's like what? It's like come on, like the it, indignity of being killed. The indignity, but then yes. Have your- <laughs> <laughs> Especially that one because it looks like it's hatching out of an egg. Yes. And they could have made it half of an eggshell, but they spe- specify that it's bones. So are its bones. legs so coming out of the up. eye sockets? Yes, yeah. correct. It's like upside down, <laughs> uh, like a little a little nose hole where its dick would go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh my god. There it's it cute. It's cute until it starts shitting in your skull, Gus. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, we'll move on to our next uh, question here. Uh, Carolyn will get that point. And this is our first shiny question of the game. This is a game we call Needs More Pixels. We've taken an iconic image from TV or movies and we have pixelated it to the point, hopefully, probably beyond recognition. We're gonna see if you can identify what movie or TV show it is based only on our crazy, wacky, pixelated image. Now, if you want it to be a little bit clearer, you can do that, you can pass. If all three of you pass, we'll get one level clearer. So it'll get easier for you to guess, but it'll also get easier for your competitors. Uh, Let's take a look at that image. What is this from? Andrew's buzzed in. Um, oh my God, I just had it, I had it in my mind and then I just let it go. Um, I'll pass. I'm so sorry. Pass. I'm so sorry. I just had it. All right. Um, I'm going to pass. 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 All right. Let's get one level clearer. Oh, much oh. better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Andrew, you're buzzing again. Yes. Is this from uh, Star Wars, The Force Awakens? This is not from Star Wars, The Force Awakens. No, it is not. Unfortunately, you'll you'll be out of the running now, so it'll just be between right. Gus and Carolyn. Um, mm. uh, you can either take your guess or you can pass. If one of you guesses and guesses wrong, we'll go one level clear automatically uh, for, for the last person remaining. Um, so guess pass, or pass. Pa- yeah. Pass, pass. All right, that's a little bit clearer. Any other... <laughs> Mm-mm. I'm gonna have to oh, pass. Mm. I can't. I can't tell. <laughs> I'm gonna pass, but Andrew texted me about something unrelated. It seems oh like yeah, he's... something totally. Uh, uh, let's go one level clear. Uh, I feel like I'm gonna be kicking myself once uh, <laughs> once we figure this out. Yeah, go ahead, Gus. Uh, is this from Star Wars: A New Hope? Uh, this is not. No, it is not. Mm. Uh, okay, Carolyn. I'll guess. Yes. Um, actually, is this from Dune? 
Uh, no, we're, we're all focusing in on that desert. It's not, there is a desert there. It's not Star Wars. It's not Dune. Andrew, do you know, you, you won't be able to claim the point because you already bounced out. I'm just curious. If you, I, if you I know. I thought it was uh, Mad Max. It is indeed Mad Max Fury Road. Uh, let's see the yeah, image. That's what the guess. Uh, mm. Yes, it's Furiosa oh, no. in the desert. Uh, I was streaming there. That was, by the way, when I blanked earlier, that was the answer that I blanked. <laughs> no. I, and that's oh, why no. when I went, what, Wait. and then I like, I guess, like, I guess, uh, uh, Star Wars, just because I couldn't think of the first thing that I wanted to say, and then ah. came, and the, the you know, mm, I'm, I'm uh, kicking myself right now. Kicking well, myself. no yeah. points for that one, unfortunately. What is our point spread as we go into round two here? Carol two, Gus with two, Andrew. Ready to make a comeback. Perfect position for a we're, comeback. We're, we're gonna finish. Right? We're gonna finish in that tie, just like we dreaded. Yeah. it's gonna. Be, we're gonna, <laughs> it's gonna happen. Neck it's neck. already happening. Here is our next statement. Casper the Friendly Ghost first appears in a 1945 cartoon simply titled The Friendly Ghost. In the short, Casper fails to befriend a rooster, a mole, a cat, and a mouse who are all terrified of him. Distraught, Casper makes plans to become a hermit until he meets a friendly pair of human children named Bonnie and Johnny. Uh, Carolyn is buzzed in. Um, actually, Casper was first introduced as a cartoon, not a movie. I say it is a cartoon. Uh, it's a cartoon short, so that is what I say in the oh, question. So it's I mean, not... like uh, drawn out, not a not animated, just like a still, like a comic. I don't mm, check me on this because uh, I think he does actually first appear as a uh, in this sort of animated. It was like this this program that was like it's like oh we're gonna show off a couple of little cartoons. There might have been like a short book that never got published that um, that eventually became this, but I don't think it was anything that was like available to the public basically. Casper was originally created in like 1930 and made to be in a co in a storybook for children in 1939 that they then sold to Paramount for 1945 to come out. So 1945 yeah. is correct, but you were also correct on the original basis. Oh, so was it never sold? It wasn't sold until like 1945. Oh, uh, yeah, it was like a concept they had. It's like I want to make this into a children's book, but then it never sold, so they sold it as a cartoon instead, and that was. And hard. that author was my grandfather, <laughs> <laughs> no. who's now a friendly ghost. Get in here, <laughs> Gus. Um, actually, there was no mole. Uh, there was a mole. Yeah, that mole hey. was not having was not going to be friends with that ghost. It's far too scary. <laughs> simply too scary for him, Mr. Mole. Uh, Andrew, do you want to take a stab? Um, he didn't befriend two human children. Uh, he does eventually befriend two human children, Bonnie and Johnny. The answer we were looking for is that he doesn't, uh, after he's, he's struck out with all these, uh, plans to, to befriend these animals and none of them want anything to do with them, he doesn't plan to become a hermit. He actually tries to commit suicide, uh, by hey. lying down on the, tr on the train tracks, which is like, one, dark dark for a kid's cartoon. And number two, uh -huh. you're a ghost, buddy. Uh, I don't know if that's actually going to work. Uh, you, you've kind of already been through this before. Is it ever specified how he dies? Like I in don't the think movie, it is. With Christina Ricci, he like mm -hmm. freezes to death or something, right? Didn't he die I, in like a skating accident or something? I think- He uh, died in a, in a middle parting hair accident. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite jokes ever on The Simpsons is when uh, Lisa speculates that Casper is the ghost of Richie Rich who could yeah. not find happiness in material wealth, so he kills himself and becomes <laughs> Casper the Friendly Ghost. Yeah, It totally makes sense, because they do like look the same. They have the same like bulbous <laughs> head and eyes. It's like, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe this makes sense. Um, yeah. I, I don't yeah. think this, the original ever goes into how he died, which is like, on the one hand, you can, you can understand why, right? If it's like, okay, like the concept is he's a ghost. We don't need to get, get into the backstory. But also, if you're going to like be having that ghost try to kill itself, it's like, well, you're clearly not shying away from death here. Like, right. you could tell us <laughs> something about it. Uh, no points for that one. I wasn't totally expecting it. I just wanted to talk about uh, a friendly ghost for a little while. Sure, here is our <laughs> next uh, statement. The initial print run of the fifth issue of The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen had to be destroyed and reprinted because it featured an authentic vintage advertisement for Marvel brand douches, and the publisher feared this would be seen as inappropriate for their target demographic. Mm, Gus is buzzed in. Um, actually, the product was not Marvel brand douches. Uh, that is not the answer we're looking for. Um, actually, it wasn't the edition you said it was? It wasn't the fifth issue? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Nothing uh, nothing that picky, I'm afraid. Picky, uh, okay. Carolyn, yeah. Um, actually, it mm. wasn't out of fear for their ta target demographic. It was mm -hmm. out of fear of getting sued by Marvel. 
That is actually 100% correct. Uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen uh, was published uh, under an imprint of DC, and uh, this was a real, ah. a real douche that existed, a real brand of Marvel brand douches. They pulled this thing, um, but after it went out, they're like, "Fuck, this is." Go they're going to think like that. This is a jab at Marvel, uh, and we're going to get sued. So we have to destroy this, reprint it, and, and remove the Marvel brand douches from this issue of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I would have loved <laughs> to have seen the court fight. It's like, like an annoying nerd slap fight brought to like the highest court of just sort of being like, uh, <laughs> this nerd called me a douche and I'm very angry about it. It's like, but this nerd, like, but it's historically accurate, your honor. It's like everything about this would have been an embarrassing mess if anyone actually wanted to like bring suit for it. <laughs> My <laughs> client clearly did fuck his mom. Therefore, yeah. <laughs> it is not slander. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm just a simple country lawyer. I don't know. Who fucked whose mother? <laughs> this is not the proceedings I wish to engage in here today. Let the record show that a douche is a hygienic device, and so there is no uh, in insult here. That my client does indeed take it as a compliment, your honor. Yeah. <laughs> Sustained. <laughs> uh, that point will go to Carolyn. Uh, I'll reset these buzzers, and here is the next statement. The game Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order takes place five years after the events of Revenge of the Sith. At the start of the game, you play Cal Kestis, a Jedi Knight being pursued by Imperial Inquisitors, the Second Sister, and the Ninth Sister. Uh, Carolyn. Um, actually, it mm -hmm. takes place more than five years after the events of Order 66. Uh, no, that is incorrect. It's not the answer we're looking for. Gus. Um, actually, he is not a Jedi Knight. That is correct. At the start of the game, he is still a Padawan. He is not yet a Jedi Knight. Uh, I think later in the game you become one. Uh, but at the start, uh, you're still just, just a lowly Padawan, not a Jedi Knight. Which sucks, right? Like, if anything can get you knighthood, like, if every other Jedi Knight, and they're still like, no, buddy, you gotta earn it. It's like, it's like they killed so, gotta, there's definitely a job opening here. They killed you, so you many got, of them. You gotta keep wearing that stupid long little braid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah the, I hate it. Kind of tail, I keep um, dipping it in fact, things on accident, and it gets wet, and I hate no. it. <laughs> um, I rage quit that game so oh. hard because the maps were punishingly difficult to get back like once you completed a mission it was so hard they did this like transparent 3d modeling system for these environments and it was so difficult to tell where you were what connected to what what level you were on so i quit that game <laughs> and now i hate it even more because i lost this question <laughs> i completely agree i felt like the like i I felt like some of the game mechanics were really cool and a lot of fun, uh, and, and a lot of mm -hmm. like the the battle and combat stuff was really cool. But like, what a slog! And right. then, like, yeah, going through like, and it, it gets easier once you have like double jump ability and like cool abilities that you get later in the game. But man, alive, do they make you work for it? They it just really seems like make you I got for this it. magic robot on my back. Like, can't he kind of give me directions <laughs> or something? That game is one of my uh, secret shames. Uh, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I have that game installed on my Xbox right now, and I still have never fired it up once. <laughs> like, really? I don't, I don't know what it is. I cannot bring myself to start that game. Who, who knows? Well, uh, Gus got that one. We'll move on to our next question, which is another shiny question. Uh, and this is a game that we're calling, Oh My God. I'm going to show you an image of a character, and I want you to tell me what god that character worships. Let's take a look at our first image here. Our first image. Uh, tell me, who is your god? Where is your god now? Uh, who does Conan the Barbarian worship? Do we know? Uh, uh, Gus has buzzed I, in. I'm, I'm gonna take a yeah. guess here. Yeah. I don't remember. I'm gonna say Thor. Uh, no, that is not correct. Mm. Uh, Carolyn. Um, actually, he worships Gore. <laughs> no, uh, tis not gore. Andrew, do you have have you found anything in your mind palace? Uh, absolutely not. Um, I know I'm drawing a complete blank on this. All right, but, blank. Oh, we'll 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 say no one got this one. The answer I was looking for was Crom. Crom is the god. Oh, that, Crom, uh, God. <laughs> that physically hurt Andrew. No! I saw it happen. <laughs> yeah. The way you said Crom, God, no, is like the way like Michael Scott said no in that one episode of The Office where, 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 where Toby comes out. He's like, no, no, no! 
Come on, God, no. <laughs> we got a couple other things to look at here. So let's take a look at the next one. Who is their God? Oh, uh, Andrew and Gus have both buzzed in, but Andrew just narrowly beat Gus. So Andrew. Uh, Gozer? Gozer, yes, Gozer is the answer I'm looking for there. That oh. one will go to Andrew, who so of course serves Gozer. That's from Ghostbusters? That's from yep. Ghostbusters. Uh, okay. um, let's yeah. look at our next one. Who is your god? Uh, Andrew's buzzed in. Uh, uh, Reaper Chief's god is Aslan. That is correct. Reaper Chief uh, oh. worships Aslan. This is from uh, Chronicles of Narnia. Uh, let's take a look at our next one. Link. There's temples all over the place, Carolyn. Yeah. Um, actually, the <laughs> Triforce. Uh, no, no, that's not what we're looking for. No, there is a named deity, you know, related to the Triforce, but there is it, there is uh, something other than the Triforce. Um, I'll take a stab. Um, great. It's uh, Hyrulea. You're so fucking close, but you are not oh, right. Oh, no. uh, 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 Andrew. What, Gus? You said Hyrulea. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. I did. I did. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> this one hurts. This one really Let does hurt. <laughs> do, you, do you know this girl? I do. I do. Since Gus said it, I'm pretty sure. I, I This is an embarrassing. Uh, I, I can't even. I'm going to pass to you, Carolyn. I don't Great. even want to. Pass it. Uh, Carolyn, what's the answer? The goddess Hyrule. That's also not what I'm looking for. The answer I was looking for was Hylia, uh, which is like Hyrulea. Hy um, oh. Very, very close, uh, mm. but not oh. ultimately what we're looking for. Uh, well, who does this person worship? Who is their god? This is just any old orc from Warhammer 40k. Uh, Gus. I think it's me. I think uh, all Warhammer orcs uh, worship uh, me. You all worship me, your yeah. god, Gus. I, uh, I no. give you paint and I bring you to life. <laughs> that is incorrect, but uh, certainly mm. you are their creator, I, I guess you would say. Uh, Carolyn. I think it's Gork and Mork. That is correct. It is Gork and Mork. <laughs> that is the answer yes. I was looking for. Um, My 400 hours in uh, Total War Warhammer 2 just paid off. <laughs> <laughs> Gork and Mork, is that the fail spinoff of Mork and Mindy? Like, yes, it is. It might work out. Yeah, yeah. yeah Mork and Mindy Mork didn't work out. with a man. And... Yeah, yeah, Mork met Gork and was like, I think this is going to work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's take a look at our next one. Carolyn's buzzed in, but but who's above Sauron? The, the Dark Lord Melkor. Yes, Melkor I would have also accepted Ooh. Morgoth. Uh, but Melkor, that is indeed the god above Sauron. Have you read the Silmarillion? Several times. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh my oh, well, glutton god. Glutton for punishment oh, over here. That's the only way you know that. <laughs> <laughs> and did oh, not man. lose my virginity until later in life. <laughs> <laughs> that, man, that is like sand on toast. That is just, yes. oh my god. I think that was our last one. Uh, so that means our final count here, we had two for Andrew, two for Carolyn. No one got Crom or Hylia. Uh, so that means you'll both take one point for that shiny mm. question. Point for mm. each of you. The comic series Sex Criminals follows Susie and John, a couple with the rare ability to freeze time when they orgasm, a temporary stasis that John calls the quiet. Though they both discover this power independently during adolescence, after a meeting they realize they can both occupy the quiet if they orgasm simultaneously. They decide to use this ability to rob banks. Uh, Carolyn has buzzed in. Um, actually. Yes. They did not discover this power at adolescence. They did, yes. No, that is not the that is not what we're looking for here. Gus. They do not discover this independently. Uh, they do. Uh, they, they, they both mm. sort of like realize they have this power. It's just like until later they realize they both have it. And you didn't say um actually. Uh, 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 oh, Andrew. Your curses. <laughs> um actually, they don't call it the quiet. You are uh, close enough. I'll give you. Uh, I'll give you the point unless someone can scoop it. So specifically, John does not call it the quiet. Uh, Susie does, uh, but John calls it some something else. So I will give you the point unless someone can tell me what John calls it. I have read this comic. Yeah. A, a few years ago, and I think um actually John calls it. The pause? No, that's not correct. Uh, Gus, you can take a stab or you can pass. Um, uh, the, um, actually, he calls it the clarity. 
Incorrect. No, that's it. Uh, Andrew will give you the point for that one. Um, uh, actually, John calls it "cum world." Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it is a moment where, yeah, Susie calls it this very kind of poetic, like, "Oh yes, it's the quiet." And John is like, "Yep, I'm going into cum world." Uh, uh, at least until they meet, and are sort of like, "You can't call it cum world anymore." I got a very different mental image when I think of cum world. I'm just gonna yes. throw that out there. Not, <laughs> yeah. Not, yeah, I thought they closed that. that amusement park down. <laughs> I tried to look up. An image because Cum World is actually like a really pretty place once you get in there. But <laughs> my Google search just went off the rails. Yeah. I, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll move on to our next statement here. The special effects in Gremlins mainly rely on puppets to bring the Mogwai to life. Though puppetry has limitations, it was better than the alternatives. Stop motion animation was ruled out for being too time consuming, and a plan to put children in Gremlin suits was tested but ultimately rejected. Uh, Andrew. Um, actually, they did use some stop-motion animation. Uh, no, no, it was, it was pretty much all puppetry. Gus. Um, actually, they never considered putting children in Gremlins costumes. Uh, that is correct. Can you be more specific? I, this, I know it's a vague thing asking for more specifics. Children were too fat to fit in the suits. <laughs> An excellent guess. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll give you the point unless someone can be more specific. Uh, you can either pass or, or take a swing if you have no idea what I'm talking about. The children were too tall. Like the gremlins were always much smaller. Um, actually, the gremlins were always much smaller. A uh, good guess, but no, that's not it either. Andrew, you want to take a take a swing to scoop or? Um, actually, they couldn't, no one can breathe inside the gremlins, uh, puppets. <laughs> uh, no, no, that, that's, uh, that's not what we're looking for either. It wasn't that there was a plan to put children in gremlin suits that was tested and then, re then rejected. The plan was to put monkeys in gremlin suits that they tested and then rejected. Um, for obvious reasons, it didn't work. Yeah. Can you believe the yeah. monkeys kind of freaked out when you put the gremlin head on, <laughs> on them? Yeah, uh, can't, can't believe it. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, I wasn't necessarily expecting anyone to know about it, but I desperately wanted to talk about it. Uh, I, I, want, I, I hope they have test footage. I want to see this. I want. <laughs> I put it to you that actually putting monkeys in disorienting costumes would be more destructive than actual gremlins. <laughs> like that might actually be yeah. more dangerous. Do gremlins rip people's fingers off and eat faces? Because these do. <laughs> these sure do. I will say that one of the reasons they considered this plan in the first place, because it sounds outlandish, right? It sounds like it's just like like whoever came in the room that day, it's like, I know how we're gonna crack this gremlins problem. It's like the moment they said monkeys that they was just like, you're fired, get out. The the, the reason that <laughs> didn't happen um, is because this had been sort of done before. So in Babes in Toyland, there's a scene where there's like a, clearly like kind of a knockoff of Mickey Mouse, but there's like a sort of mouse uh, figure that I think they put like, uh, an orangutan in or something like that. And oh. it's creepy as hell. It is like seriously disturbing because like it's moving in a way that feels very biological. It's clearly in a suit, but it's like creepy oh floppy movements. Um, uh, so like there is precedence for it, but it, even when they actually did it, it's like this, this is no good. That just like uncanniness of it. Like when something is clearly like biological in movement, but like yeah. that's not human. That's, that's what like all, that's uh, anything, anytime you see like something like truly scary that's usually at the basis right. of it it's like <laughs> ah that's 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 an organic movement but is not human and yes. that is what is like but is meant to be and now like i all my hairs are standing on it <laughs> we will move on to our next uh next thing here this is a game we're calling we're not so different you and i i'm going to show you six characters from all across media it's up to you to find out what is the one thing that unites all of these characters What do all of these folks have in common? Carolyn is buzzed in. They're all from the last city of Atlantis. That's correct. All of these characters oh. at some point lived in Atlantis. That includes uh, Golden Bat. Uh, also the Antarians from the movie Cocoon spent a good amount of time in Atlantis. The Draconians uh, from Visions of Escaflown uh, and Darts from Yu-Gi-Oh! I know none of these except for Aquaman and the Princess. Oh, <laughs> those so are the two that I keep on two, it's like, well. I know those these two. Like... There's some Atlanteans. The Antarians is a little weird. It's like, okay, you're already aliens. You didn't have to make that pit stop in Atlantis, but I guess, you know, <laughs> if you wanted to, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna judge you. Golden Bat is like, um, it's like a, it's sort of like a Japanese, it's a Japanese superhero who, he has a lot of like sort of just sort of general kind of like Batman type qualities to him. It's sort of like us oh, solving mm. crimes and solving mysteries um, and just is from Atlantis. Uh, even though nothing about his costume seems to suggest <laughs> that. 
that point will go to Carolyn. And what is our point spread as we go into our final question here? All right, Carolyn with five, Gus with four, Andrew with two. Will Carolyn walk away with the win or will Gus make it a tie? Here is our last statement, which as always concerns real life skills. <laughs> Who doesn't love a little time off? The United States recognizes 10 federal holidays when non-essential federal government offices, federally chartered banks, and schools are closed. Some federal holidays include New Year's Day, Columbus Day, and Washington's birthday. Carolyn. Um, actually, New Year's Day is not recognized as a federal holiday. New Year's Day is a federal holiday. Uh, Andrew. Oh. Um, actually, it's not called Columbus Day. It's called Indigenous Peoples Day now. Uh, it is in many states, but on a federal level, they still call it Columbus Day. Uh, Gus. Um, actually, it's not just non-essential federal workers. It's all federal workers. No, that is, that's incorrect. Uh, that is not what we're looking for. I'm actually going to go ahead and call this one because there's not that many nouns left in this sentence. No, no, Surprisingly, no, no, no. What, what we're looking for is that um, schools are actually not required to close on federal huh. holidays. Uh, it's just it's just a fact that pretty much all of them do uh, because the huh. states control schools. Uh, it's not it's not the jurisdiction of the federal government. Oh. Um, but what usually happens is that states will themselves recognize every federal government as a state holiday, and they will then choose to close their schools. All right, that is five points for Carolyn, four for Gus, Curses. two for Andrew. That makes Carolyn our winner for this time. And once again, Gus narrowly missing the win. Congratulations, Carolyn. What a great <laughs> game from all of you. That is it for our game. Uh, thank you all for playing with me and thank you for watching. Join us next time for even more pedantic corrections here on Um Actually.